Amen. Thank you. Thank you. United Methodist men. All right. All right. United United Women in Faith, look out. And United Women in Faith, look out. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful and grateful, O oh God, that you have given us all a story to tell as a witness of just how good you are. We're so thankful, O oh God, that you have preserved us as your witnesses, even until this very hour. And as we gather around your word, we ask, O oh God, that you would hide me behind your dear cross, that we all will hear what you desire for all of us to hear in spite of what I may do or say. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Our gospel lesson for today comes from uh, Luke, the 14th chapter, specifically the 33rd verse. Uh, it's part of the passage of scripture that was read this morning for our New Testament lectionary. Um, and this is taken from the Amplified version of our Bible. Jesus said, so then any of you who does not forsake, and in parentheses, uh, forsake would uh, mean renounce, surrender, claim to, give up, say goodbye to, close parentheses, all that he or she has, con has cannot be my disciple. Let me read that again without the parentheses. Jesus said, so then any of you who does not forsake all that he or she has cannot be my disciple. For a few more moments, we'd like to share words around this thought. What part of all are you and myself still holding on to? What part of all are we holding on to, still holding on to as Christ's disciple? Um, we are demanded to give up all, say goodbye to all in comparison to the priority over choosing God or choosing anything else. Uh, what part of that all are we still holding on to? We, we, we give our lives to Christ. We give our lives to a cause, but at what cost are you willing to give all? Or do we choose to give what we want to give or what we assume that God cannot handle for us, that we must be involved in the process? This passage of scripture um, is for everyone, including those who are already following Christ. You, you will note that uh, Jesus addressed the crowds when you read this a passage of scripture. Uh, you're addressing not only the immediate disciples, uh, the matthios, which is the word for uh, disciple, which actually means learner. You're a learner. They're learning. They are pupils of Christ. The 12 that were following Christ at the time were called disciples. And those who would be disciples, the crowd, as Jesus journeyed on towards Jerusalem, he was speaking to them as well. And the gospel writer, Luke, uh, placed this biography of Jesus in such a way that it came after 
uh, the parable or the instance of Jesus explaining uh, the wedding feast of which folk were invited to, as well as to the great banquet. Uh, uh, and it's interesting, the placement of that uh, portion of scripture that the gospel writer Luke uh, placed there to emphasize the call of Jesus to those who will come uh, to Jesus and follow and, and be learners of Jesus. You remember in the 11th chapter of Matthew, uh, Jesus says, come unto me all who labor and who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come and learn of me, and I will give you rest for your souls. So, so the positioning of the passage of scripture in relation to the banquet and to the wedding feast, uh, sure, we are invited to come to a happy place, a what would be a happy place that we could fellowship. It's, it's, it's easy to uh, go to a place where you are anticipating joy, you're anticipating journey, journeying to a place, no matter how difficult it may be, but the end result is, is joy. And then Luke then has Jesus speaking to everyone, those who would be come learners of Christ, that it's not all easy. It's not all easy. Uh, following or being a learner of or having Christ as your leader, the road is not going to be easy. You will note when you read the passage at home, Bible check, Bible check, Bible check, take your Bibles home and read them. And verse 27 is really key. Underline that whole verse because it does explain that uh, to be a follower of Jesus, you must take up your cross. You must take up a cross, your cross. And, and your cross may include bearing the burdens of others and all of that what goes on with this journey down here. But you must take up your cross to follow Jesus. Now, yeah, you can come to the banquet. You can have all the good things happen to you. You can experience all of the niceties of life and all of that. but. That, that's part of following Jesus, too. There will be good times. There will be joyful times. There will be times that you will say, man, I'm just happy to be here. Yes, yes. But there is also a balance to that, whereas you will take up the cross. And in taking up the cross, the, the disciples then and would be disciples knew that type of language to mean um, death. If one was to take up a cross, they were either going to carry the cross, a beam, or they were going to the place of crucifixion. And it was a one-way street. We are marching to our death. We're taking up a way that leads to sure death. Hmm. And, 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 and that is a cost that Jesus then uh, gives examples or parables of those who are trying to build a building, okay? And, and not considering every aspect and or cost that goes into building that building. It's a conscious decision. Or if you were a king uh, who only had 10,000 soldiers to go out, and whether it's a good idea to go out and, and, and fight against an army that is twice your size and number. All of these are conscious decisions that we must weigh when we 
decide our own free will to follow Jesus or become learners of Jesus. That is not going to be uh, rosy all the time. It's going to be difficult when following Jesus. It's going to require that we give up uh, some things that we want to hold on to. And the question is whether or not we can afford following Christ. It also uh, puts the question, can we afford not to follow Christ? Hmm? And one must make it up in one's mind about the cost of that. Are we willing to give up what we want in life to follow Christ? To, to, to commit our ways to learning of Christ and to practicing what Christ says for us to be disciples or children of God and behave in such a way that it is a witness to others so that they want to follow Christ as well. I, I would submit to you when the good times are just rolling in and things are going well, uh, it's not that difficult to encourage folk to come with you. Hey, we're going to have a party. Uh, we're going to have a good time. Uh, we're going to have good fellowship, good food. Everything is going to be fine. We've got a party going on. Come over. Right? And, 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 and more times than not, people will say, yeah, I want to go and have a good time with you. But tell somebody, you know, we're going to Calvary. We're going to be crucified. We're going to be talked about. We're going to a place or we're going to journey where people will misunderstand us. Uh, people will persecute us. People will do all sorts of things to us. Do you want to go with me? Mm -hmm. And that person must decide whether or not the cost is too much uh, to come along with you. No, no, I'd, I'd rather do something different huh, uh, than follow the path that you're on. Because the path that you're on requires too much of my time, perhaps too much of my prayer or concern. It, 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 it overwhelms me on how I need to forgive those folk who are unforgivable. I don't want to go that path. It, the cost is too great for me to follow this Jesus who says, love your enemies, mm. to sacrifice. And if one, someone wants you to go one mile, then go two miles. No, that, that's, that's difficult. That's too much of a cost uh, for me to follow Jesus. Mm. But yet Jesus says, in, in order for you to, to become a disciple, a true learner of following the way. And Jesus said, he is the way, the truth and the life. Then it's going to cost you something. It's not going to be easy following God. It's going to rub your friends the wrong way. It's probably going to rub you the wrong way on the things that God requires for a relationship, a right relationship with God. And we are individually called upon to give up things that would stand in the way of true fellowship with Christ so that we can become as Christ would have us. So, so think about the all, and I know this passage of scripture, you can uh, look at, uh, sure, the cost of building a building, and, and sure, going out to fight a war that you may not, can, uh, all of that. But there are some things in our lives that we continue to hold on to mm, that prevent us from following Christ. You remember the rich young ruler mm, who apparently had a good checklist of all the things that he did in terms of following the Ten Commandments, yeah, all of that. And then Jesus, you're already in on the thing. There is something left for you to give up, something less left that is lacking in your life. You need to sell 
everything that you have, give it to the poor, and then come and follow me. Hmm. And that uh, young, rich, young ruler left away very sad, still contemplating whether or not ooh, the, the, the cost of following Jesus was too much for him. What is it in your life mm, that you can think of that you want to hold on to mm, that is impeding your way of following Jesus more closely? Mm. Well, what is it about uh, how we go about our day even that suggests that we are still holding on to things and to people? Mm, that we allow, that we make a conscious decision uh, on not becoming closer and closer to the Lord. Mm. The people in your life, the loved ones in your life, those whom are things in your life, those that you hold in high regard, is it equal to God? Is it more than God? Or is it, God, I give you a piece of this person, I give you a piece of what I own, but you know, I want to hold on to it because it's, it's me. It's my life. It, 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 it's, 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 it's something that I identify with something that makes me, me. And, and you're asking me, God, to give me up hmm, unto you. And, and, and we all struggle with that. We all struggle with, me giving something up for Christ. It, it, it is a struggle. Uh, I would rather give God, and that's a good thing to do. Yes, yes. But I want to hold on to it because I would be out of control. Uh, I wouldn't be able to cuss somebody out. <laughs> huh? Huh? And feel good about cussing somebody out, right? And, and, and then ask God for forgiveness. Huh? How about that? But, 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 and you know how we do. We do. We do. We hold on to stuff that makes us more comfortable with ourselves and what we think with others. Hmm? Uh, I will forgive, but I won't forget. Because mm -hmm. I want to hold on to you, because on to that, because uh, that's I'm just comfortable with um, my contention with you. Mm -hmm. I I'm waiting for you to ask for forgiveness, because that will make me feel better about forgiving you. We don't give all mm, to Christ. We don't, we don't give all of our concerns about our health to Christ. Hmm? Hmm? Uh, Rick uh, gave a wonderful testimony this morning. Uh, having to go to the hospital, a place where God has provided, where God, the agents of God's love reside and work there and figuring out what's wrong. But, 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 but then he meets God's angels, God's witnesses. Huh? So you just... Prayer, prayer, prayer. Uh, did you give it all to Christ? And just prayer will heal you, huh? 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 So, so we have a hard time of giving all of our selves to Christ. What, what, what we we want to hold on to 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 control it, and, and we all struggle about that. We do, and God knows that. Hmm? that. That our will is to have the things that we think we need and, and perhaps want. It, it's too much of a cost to give it away. Hmm? It's too much of a cost for me to go to Calvary. And Jesus gives us an example of giving our all, giving ourselves even unto death. Uh, he had a tough time there in the Garden of Gethsemane. 
uh, uh, the God of this universe, knowing that this hour would come for Jesus, knowing that this is why Jesus came, so that he could die upon a cross for a sinner like me, a sinner like you. Huh? But he had a tough time there in the garden of Gethsemane. God, you requiring my all? Yes. My all is my death. Yes. Hmm? And he struggled with that. As we struggle with the will of God for our lives, the complete control of God over our life, we struggle with it. No, you gave me this mind. You gave me this ability. You gave me the capability to think. But, 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 but now you want all of me. Yes, I want all of you. And then Jesus struggled with it. I, you mean I got to die? Yes. I got to. That's a costly price for my being with you. Yes, God says. This is not cake time. This is death time. And God is asking everyone that would become God's disciple. Make up your mind on whether or not you want to do that. It ain't a bed of roses. It's not easy being a Christian. It's not easy holding your peace when you just want to just choke somebody to death. It's not easy being long-suffering with a person who just don't want to listen. It's not easy. Forgiving a person who you know does not appreciate forgiveness. It's not easy being a follower of Christ. It's not easy praying for your enemy. It's not easy sacrificing time and time again for those who are unpreached. It's not easy working with folk who is like someone out of hell. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. but, but, but God is saying, this is what I want. Give it to me. Give it to me, Christ is saying. Give me your all. Give it to me. I'm hurting. Give me your pain. I'm dying. Give me your death. I am sick. Give me your sickness. I am confused. Give me your confusion. Hmm? Can you give it all to Christ? Can you surrender all of yourself to Christ? Do you have the faith? Do you have the trust that God can do a better job than you? Hmm? We make it so hard on ourselves by holding on to the stuff that God has already given us. We refuse to let it go. We refuse to let go of that resentment. We refuse to let go of whatever that's keeping us from being totally trusting in the Lord God. Hmm? Even our grief, we refuse to let our grief go. It makes us more comfortable to grieve and cry over loved ones that are past and having a good time and glory already. It, it, we refuse to let it go when we're worried about a loved one who's out there drifting. We, it, 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 we want that. We want, it makes us feel more human, if you will, about this is a worry that I have. God, you might not know how I feel. You know, but the record has it that God knows the very secrets of our hearts. God knows better than you, than you know about yourself what's in your heart. And God knows what it takes that you can't bear it alone, that you know not better than God. And God is saying, give it to me. If you want to be my disciple, then give me your cares. Give me your tears. Give me your pain. Give me your anguish. Give it to me. Give it all to me. Trust me that I will do something that you never thought could be done. Amen. Trust me to open doors which cannot be opened. Trust me to part the Red Sea for you. Trust me to heal you. Trust me to deliver you. Trust me. Hmm. Are we still holding on to stuff that hmm, we should let go to be a true disciple? of Christ, 
This is a loving, trusting relationship. God has promised never to leave us or forsake us. Trust that. Even though you're in the valley of the shadow of death, trust that God is still with you. Even though when the doctor says no, hmm, listen to the yet of God. Hmm. Are you still holding on? What part of all that God has placed in our lives, are you still holding on to it? Hmm. I suggest that we get in the practice of surrendering all to Jesus. Amen? Amen. And amen. Let us now stand. Amen. 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 Uh, I surrender all. As the doors of the church open, let us practice giving all to Christ. All our worries, all our pain, all our tears, all our hopes and desires, give it. To Jesus, surrender it. To Jesus, surrender. You've been trying this that and other to resolve a problem. Give it to Jesus. You've been trying to overcome an addiction. Give it to Jesus. His presence. You were trying to get up the loss of a lot more. You were trying to make relationship work. You were trying to make it a simple piece. You were trying to be a blessed Yes. <laughs>